Antoine, thanks a million for joining me today. Thanks for welcoming me. Thank you. Let's start with you giving me a little bit about yourself and your business. So uh, my name is uh, Antoine de Matten. I'm originally from Switzerland and uh, I've been working in the perfume industry for almost 30 years. I uh, started with uh, one of the big Swiss companies. Not everyone knows, but two of the biggest fragrance companies are Swiss. Uh, travel all around the world, live in the US, in Brazil, in Europe obviously, in Vienna, in Geneva, and I've been seven years in Dubai. And uh, four years ago, I joined the company Eurofragrance, uh, Catalan Spanish company, which is uh, with the HQ in Barcelona. Right. So you're with the company now four years. What are some of the changes that you've seen in the industry that have had major effects? So uh, I joined the company as a global sales director. And uh, I must say that there is a, when you're working for one of the major players, there is a big part of the business that you don't see because you more focus on the giant companies. And uh, I've been amazed to see that there is another world with hundreds of uh, fragrance uh, houses. Yeah. And uh, competition is really fierce. But on the other hand, there is also a very big market. Right. So I think also it has been um, not a surprise, but the, the, this region has been a golden mine for many years with a double digit growth and everything. And uh, so this has attired, uh, attired, no, uh, attracted yeah. um, many, many, many players. So one of the trends we see that, okay, competition is more fierce than before. Yeah. So, you know, that, just picking up on what you're saying, obviously it has been a gold mine for a lot of companies out here. The Middle East is a very uh, attractive market. There's been what I suppose you could consider a little bit of a slowdown in the market over the last couple of years. Is that something you guys are seeing or is it having an effect on your business? No, it, it, it is true that uh, compared to what it was, I mean, it was raining projects and uh, orders and everything. Yeah. Now you have to fight much more. You have to really to be hungry and you need to show that you're different from the others and that you're better than the others. Right. Uh, in a way, it's very healthy because I think that uh, when you have uh, this kind of competition, only the best one will... Uh, be able to continue to, uh, to deal with the, the, the people here. And uh, it's, you see that each time there's a crisis, again, there are opportunities. So also our clients, which the, the, the market has been slowing down a little bit, but they are exporting much more. They are trying to find new market in India, in Africa, even in the United States. <clears throat> we have some clients now which are selling very well in Latin America, in Brazil which I think that they would not have done before. So, and of course, this is good for us too. Of course. So talk to me then about some of the major challenges that you've had over the last couple of years and how you managed to overcome them as business. I think uh, one of the main challenge is uh, our company has been extremely successful, especially in this region, because we are one of the leading company, especially on the fine perfumery. Mm. And this success has been done a little bit uh, behind the scene without too many people noticing it. Yeah. Now, intentionally, we want it to be much more visible. Uh, but of course, it has attracted much more uh, competition and uh, we are much more target than, uh, than before. Yeah. But on the other hand, uh, this is why we opened uh, three years ago a creative center now in Dubai. Mm. And it's really state of the art with all the new uh, technology for uh, robotization, uh, labs with perfumers evaluation yeah. boots so this has been a there was this challenge but I think by doing this we have been able to be closer to the market closer to cons and consumers yeah. to understand their need and taste and also much closer to uh, our clients so that's something I want to develop with you there the changes in tech that you're seeing in the industry what have you noticed over the last couple of years that's been changing where technology has been enhancing your product offering or the way you do business? So technology, you, you can see it at different levels. Mm. So uh, obviously within perfumes, uh, you know, so perfume is a composition of uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 ingredients. Some are naturals, others are synthetics. Mm. And uh, so you can find new molecules, new synthetics. Mm. You can find new technology to do uh, 
to extract naturals uh, with new techniques, so it gives you different uh, smell. Yeah. Then you have a big uh, change in all the manufacturing. So manufacturing in the past was manual. So you will see people uh, with drums and feelings. Now everything is uh, automatized with robots, super high technology. Uh, the same for the logistics, everything. So this is very good because it's um, improving efficiency, speed, which is key because everyone wants the product like this. Um, and uh, also about the reliability and quality. I mean, your machines, normally they do no mistakes. So yeah. It happens sometimes, but it's really reduced. And reliability is extremely important in perfuming. You're dealing with a thousands of uh, raw materials, mm -hmm. different mixing, you need to make sure it's always perfect. Yeah, yeah. So when you're approaching, let's say, if you, obviously being a global company, when you're looking at new markets or where is the next step for the business, how do you go about that approach? You know, you mentioned Africa is yeah. an important market for you guys. When you're looking to um, do business within a particular market, how do you go about that process? How do you go about raising awareness of your brand or uh, working with distributors or whatever the case may be. So before going there, I, I'd like to talk uh, just yeah. a few words about the history of the company, yeah. <clears throat> which has been uh, founded uh, 27, 28 years ago by the Sabates family in Barcelona, and it's still a family-owned company. Mm. And uh, they've been growing a lot in Spain and in the Gulf. Mm. I mean, 25 years ago, they had the nose yeah to feel, wow, there is something in this part of the world. Mm. And uh, so they grew uh, very fast. And then uh, four or five years ago, they decided that, okay, now we are a Spanish exporting company, mm. but we want to become a small multinational. Okay. And uh, mm. as a family, mm. you don't have uh, the stock market and yeah. everything. They decided to take really huge risk, massive investment, mm and open uh, um, this creative center in Dubai, right. another one in Singapore less than one year after, mm -hmm. uh, complete uh, robotization of the plant in Barcelona, mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, we just acquired a new company in the US. Okay. So in, in three years, yes. from a yeah, small company family, we became a group. Yeah. And to, to do this also, of course, we had to hire a lot of new people. Mm -hmm. And so it's really uh, fantastic because we have a mix of all the people who built this company and the success of this company during the last uh, 25 years, combined with new people, experts, coming from some of the big houses yeah. all together. And it's giving a lot of uh, synergy. I'm always saying that we kind of start up, mm -hmm. but with full of experience. Yeah. And uh, this gives, um, I think, a magic touch. And also being with a... Uh, a family company, mm -hmm. very entrepreneurial. Yeah. It gives us a lot of uh, energy to, to everyone. I mean, we're all proud yeah. to be part of this journey. And yeah. we, when we see the enthusiasm also of the owner and everything, it makes us flying. And it's very good because clients feel it also. The world is open for us. So the, 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 the difficulty is really to target not too many markets. Mm -hmm. Because you know that there is, a, when you see the, the, the whole world and the market potential, you say, wow, I want to go in Africa, I want to go in Asia, I want to go. But more and more we're realizing, okay, we're not, we don't have 2,000, 3,000 employees. Yeah. So let's make sure that we're targeting only a few markets, mm -hmm. few segments, and clients we want to work with, yeah. which is not arrogant at all. It's just yeah. that we, we need to find clients we believe in us mm -hmm. where there is trust there is this idea about working for the next five to ten years not just opportunistically of course oh, and you're obviously with the business th these changes have taken place over the last three years let's say you're with the business four years what's the culture change been like then within the business wow. you know moving from as you say uh, a family business into a, a small multinational that's quite a change for it's a big, uh, it's a big change. Yeah. Uh, not so much for me because I'm co coming from one of the big multinational, but maybe more for the people who were. Uh, so I think everyone is proud, mm -hmm. but it has 
put also a bit more pressure yeah. uh, because you know that when you do so much investment uh, and everything, of course, even if it's a family company, performance is important. Eh? So uh, we need to deliver. Yeah. Uh, but still, we try to keep this balance between uh, still being a um, family company, enthusiastic and everything, and on the other hand, yeah. deliver uh, good results. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's the key of the success. Eh? That's what allows you also to reinvest, to hire also uh, better people, and to go elsewhere and everything. So I want to talk a little bit about your marketing strategy. How do you go about building awareness of your product uh, amongst uh, your potential clients? So we are uh, in a B2B business. Yeah. Uh, so it's not so difficult to know who your target are. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go into new markets, okay, you can do some desk research, you can go to Euromonitor, you can mm -hmm. ask uh, embassies to give you listing yeah. of uh, companies and everything. Then one of the best ways is to go uh, into the market and to do store checks. Hmm. Okay. Because Back to basics. In, yeah, yeah, our company, we, we cannot work with the big, big, big players, you know, yeah. the Procter & Gamble. Yeah. The, so we're targeting the key local players, mm. plus smaller company that we call the prospect, mm. where we feel that there are young companies and there is something, mm, this is a company which tomorrow could be grow, mm. growing uh, and be one of the leaders. Yeah. So store check is very important. You, you, you go in the street, you go in the supermarket, you go in perfumery shops, yeah. everywhere, and step by step, you do your contact. Mm -hmm. So it can be very long, yeah. and sometimes you're lucky, it can be very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a networking is super important, and that's why we're participating to the, this fair here also. Uh, and um, yes, I think it, the, the, the other uh, way of doing it because we were extremely well known in this region, mm. extremely well known in fine fragrance, but not so much in other segments. Mm -hmm. So we decided to participate to a few selected fairs, mm -hmm. uh, also in Asia, in Mexico. And uh, the brand awareness has been growing very fast. The other part is also uh, because of, um, yeah, we have hired also people from other of the big groups. Mm -hmm. So the word of mouth is very, very, very strong. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a small, it, it looks big, but it's a very small mm -hmm. world. So everybody knows that. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. So I have one final question for you then. As a business leader, what's the one thing that keeps you up at night? Well, many <laughs> things. <laughs> I should not, I, I'll try to switch my phone now uh, as, as much as possible. But uh, the thing is really is to make sure that uh, your clients are happy mm. uh, because you know it's, they always depend on us. Eh? We depend on their success, but yeah. they depend uh, on us. And uh, we are, of course, we are focused on the creativity and having beautiful uh, smell and yeah. scents and everything. But then you need to make sure that the wool machine works. Eh? Mm. Uh, Sales it, cures off. Yeah, the, all the manufacturing, the logistics, you know, the, all the, the, the small details. And uh, those days, uh, the perfumery is um, suffering a kind of crisis about raw material, prices are yeah. jumping to the roof. So it's also something we keep us a bit, uh, because it, we were not used to it. Yes. Uh, and uh, apparently it's something which is here for, to stay for a while. Mm. So we need to adapt and to see how uh, to do our best, not to, uh, I mean, not for our client to suffer too much, not for the end consumer to also to suffer too much, but to find a fair uh, solution for everyone. Absolutely. Antoine, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thanks very much. Same. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.